Hello anglers and welcome back to Teach and Fishing. I'm Captain Lance Valentine. I'm excited to be here tonight. Tonight we're going to talk about the second step of our eight steps. We're going to take a little bit of time and break down step number two, which is finding the right depth of water where the fish are going to be located and exactly how deep the fish are. So we've got a lot of stuff to cover tonight. Before we get rolling, let's go back and review what our eight steps actually are. Remember, our eight steps to catching more fish is kind of how we teach everything here at Teaching Fishing and understand that finding fish, catching fish is a process, not just one simple answer. So the eight steps, again, in order of importance, be in the right location, be in the right depth of water, know how deep your fish are, get your lure to the right depth, get your right lure speed, lure size, lure shape, lure action, and lure color right, again, in that order. Order. So today we're going to be talking about depth of water and depth of fish, our second step. In uh, last week's episode, we talked about location, how to take some information and find the general location of a body of water that fish are using. Tonight we're going to break down how to find the right depth of water and how deep fish are. So let's start with some factors that are going to determine the depth of water that fish are going to be using at a certain time of year. We're going to start with the simplest, and that is what calendar period are the game fish in, meaning are they in pre-spawns, post-spawn, summer, summer peak, fall? Where are they in their calendar of activity throughout the course of the year? Remember, we're going to talk about pre-spawn, spawn, and post-spawn are really the only times of the year that fish are really have dialed in to be a, to a certain spot. Where can they find the conditions they need to spawn? The rest of that time, they're going to focus on our second factor, and that is available bait fish. Remember, game fish want to eat. That's what they do. If their bait fish are in a certain location, that's where the game fish are going to be. Game fish aren't going to be somewhere where their bait fish is not. Swim to where their bait is and then swim back to another place. That's not how that works. These fish like to conserve energy and be close to their bait. So understanding what kind of bait fish is in your lake and where they go at certain times of year is going to help make this a whole lot easier. We're going to do a couple case studies a little bit later in this seminar. Again, the bait fish location in depth is key. We have to understand what bait fish live in our lake and where they go. What do those bait fish eat? When do they spawn? Where do they spawn? Those things are all going to drive location of game fish based on where the best option to get my food is. You know, most lakes have multiple bait fish options. It's our job as an angler to figure out the best bait fish option for the time of year that we're fishing. So we take the time of year and the conditions. What is our best bait fish option? That's where we want to start looking for game fish. That's an important part of this puzzle. Available cover is pretty important. Some bait fish, especially young of the year, they need to be towards cover to survive. So if we have weed cover, if we have wood cover, if we have parts of the lake or river that are shaded, if we have lots of structure in an area, rocks, uh, crevices, inside points, corners where fish can actually hide, bait fish can actually hide, that's going to be critical to saving young of the year bait fish. They're going to go there right after they're hatched, and they're going to try to stay safe. Understanding when the bait fish in our lake hatch and when this migration happens is going to be very important to knowing where we're going to go start to look to find our game fish. All of this is a pretty important part of the puzzle. Water color, water clarity is important. Again, bait fish and game fish need certain water colors and water clarity to be able to do what they do, to hunt properly, uh, to be able to track down those bait fish, to be able to see. So water color and water clarity goes a long way to doing this. Okay, let's talk about a few general rules when we talk about depth of water. Early season, we want to focus on shallow water. And remember that shallow water doesn't just mean the shore out to about six, seven, eight, nine feet of water. It also means the top part of the water column in deep water. That shallow water, top part of the water column or shallow shore water is the fastest to warm, the fastest to get sunlight, the fastest to get plankton growth, the fastest to get bait fish activity. So game fish are going to be in that shallow water in early season. As we move into early summer, if there are deep water bait fish available, fish will move to a little bit deeper water. The water on the surface is getting a little warmer. Fish wanted to get out of that a little bit. If they're not in spawn mode, they're going to head to a little bit deeper water if there's available bait fish down there. That's absolutely critical. Remember, though, in midsummer, if you've got a body of water that's more than 30 or 40 feet deep, we may get a thermocline, which means we're going to get stratification. The top part of the water column is going to be warm. The bottom is going to be cold with no oxygen. There's a layer in between called the thermocline. 
Once we get to surface temperatures in the high 60s, low 70s, if we get that thermocline, that'll force all the game fish up above that thermocline to be where the action is. That's where the bait's going to be. Shallow water cover can also move fish in hot water into shallow depths because there is cover there. Once we get into early fall, I consider early fall uh, the mid 50 degree range, all bets are off. The thermocline breaks up. Fish can be in two feet of water. They can be in 100 feet of water. That's a really tough time to fish. And that's when we really have to focus on using our sonar. But once that thermocline breaks up, early fall, fish can be anywhere. And then once we get to mid or late fall, I, I, the indication for me for this is 52 degrees. Fish are usually, they may be anywhere in the water column, but they're probably going to be in deep water basin areas. They like the stability that deep water offers. They're going to move to that deep water. Okay, that's a quick breakdown of what depth of water to look and how to find the right depth of water when we're searching. Stay tuned. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back to talk about how to find how deep the fish actually are and the factors that determine how deep the game fish are going to be every day. Warrior Lures, custom designed and painted spoons, blades, and crankbaits for any species of fish. Check out the complete line of Warrior products, including the new Warrior XL Flutter Spoon, online or at your local tackle retailer. Proudly made in Michigan. Trackstack Fishing Systems, manufacturer of high quality mounting track, rod holders, electronics mounts, downriggers, and fishing accessories. Any angler, any species, any boat. Trackstack Fishing Systems, proudly made in Michigan. Rytec Marine, makers of custom designed transducer mounts and gimbal brackets. Great sonar performance starts with a quality transducer mount and Rytec has a mounting option for any brand on any boat. Rytec Marine, making life a little easier on the water. Worldwide Marine Insurance, don't get caught with a loss to find out you have the wrong insurance for your boat and fishing gear. Contact Bob Llewellyn today for a free checkup of your current coverage. Worldwide Marine Insurance, anglers insuring anglers. Okay, anglers, welcome back to Teach and Fishing. Again, I'm Captain Lance Valentine, and we are breaking down the eight steps. And today we're talking about step number two, which is finding the right depth of water and how deep the fish actually are. So uh, we just covered how to find the right depth of water based on some factors that we talked about, bait fish, time of year, calendar period, water temperature. Let's now talk about how to figure out how deep the fish are. Now, this is going to be done every day with your sonar. We could spend hours talking about sonar, and we will in a future seminar. But the depth of fish, the key to that is going to be able to use your sonar and figure out how deep the game fish actually are. Um, but there are some factors to start thinking about. So we take step one. We're in the general location. We need to be in the body of water we're fishing. Step two, we take some of those general factors and figure out what depth of water range we should be looking. And now step three, using our sonar, we start to get in and start looking for where these game fish actually are. But again, some very, very important things to not only consider when you're looking for what depth the fish are at, but also how fish are going to act when they're at certain depths. So let's go back to number one important, bait fish location and bait fish depth. Remember, unless it is late pre-spawn, spawning or early post-spawn, fish are going to be located where they can get the easiest meal. So again, we've said this hundreds of times, and I just want to make sure you get it. Understand we need to know what kind of bait fish live in our lake and where they are at certain types of the year. If we have multiple bait fish options, we want to know where our game fish, where our target species is, and how it's going to react to each of those different bait species. Look at, you may have bait fish in your lake. Maybe you have gizzard shad in your lake. And there's a time of year that the walleyes or the bass, whatever you're fishing for, really relate to gizzard shad. And there may be a different time of year that they don't even eat the gizzard shad because the needs of the fish are different than the needs of the bait fish. But if there are no other options where the game fish want to be, then the shad population may get decimated. So there's a lot of thinking that goes into this, understanding the bait fish and where they go. Really, really key. Cover is pretty important too. Remember, once we get into late spring, we start to get some green weed growth. We always have rocks. We always have wood. That's always an option. But as we get into late spring, early summer, we start to get some weed growth. Young of the year, newly hatched bait fish like to hide in shallow water weed growth. They feel safe. Certain bait fish like perch, we're going to do a case study here in just a second on how perch uh, draw fish to shallow water cover. 
cover can be key and sometimes even in the heat of summer the bright sun the clear water of summer shallow water cover can be your most productive fishing game fish get in there they feel comfortable they're in the weeds there's lots of bait they can hide they can ambush their bait might be your best choice water color and water clarity have a lot to do with the depth of the fish game fish like to see what they're going to eat especially my favorite game fish the walleye but bass musky pike all those game fish like to see their bait before they eat it it's kind of a, a, a just a reassurance that i'm eating something that's pretty good so water color and water clarity has a lot to do with how deep the fish are so let's kind of go on the water and kind of talk about why this is important why we need to figure out exactly how deep our fish are before we start fishing next week we're going to cover how to get lures to a certain depth so well, let's kind of talk about why it's important to understand how deep our fish are remember most game fish that we fish for have their eyes high and forward on their head which means they look up if they want to feed on the bottom which a lot of fish do at certain times depending on again depending on the bait fish what they will do is they'll actually take their body and actually tilt their body up to move this white triangle to look at the bottom that white triangle is where fish can see they are basically blind below the middle of their eye down below them they can't see down there so if they want to look something on the bottom they physically have to pop themselves up and move that triangle by knowing that and knowing how deep the fish are we can start to figure out how deep we need to put our lures. That's important. We want to get our lures above the fish most times unless the location, the cover, and the bait fish choice tell us that fish are going to be feeding on the bottom. If that's not the case, fish are going to be feeding up. We need to get our baits above, and we need to know how deep these fish are before we put a lure in the water. Second thing we want to talk about is what we call the visual zone of awareness. How far can fish see? So not only are we looking at that the water that the bait fish are using, that the game fish are going to use, how deep the game fish are actually located in the water column, but where they're actually going to be and how close they're going to be to their bait, especially in open water. As the water gets dirtier, game fish want to be and need to be closer to their bait fish, especially in open water, because they don't want those bait fish to break up and move away and they not know it and be stuck somewhere where there's no food to eat. So the clearer the water is, the further away from bait fish fish will hold. They'll be able to see, go up, use the sunlight, go up, get those bait, and come back to a comfortable depth. So they may be 6, 8, 10, 12, 15, 20 feet below the bait, go up and get it and go back to where they're comfortable if the water's clear enough for them to see their bait. In really dirty water, fish may be right underneath their bait. They may swim for half a day and never eat, but they stay right close to the bait so when it is time to eat, they can go up there and they can snatch a quick meal. Stained water, halfway in between. So understand that knowing how deep the fish are is important. Knowing the relationship to the depth of the bait fish is really important. How do I determine clear stain in dirty water? Very simple. Here's my simple rule. If I can look over the back of the boat and see the cavitation plate on my, or the prop on my motor, it's clear. If I can see the cavitation plate, it's stained. And if I can't see the cavitation plate, it's dirty. Very, very simple. All right, let's take a quick little break. We'll come back. We're going to do a case study on gizzard shad throughout the year and how fish react to them when they're looking for a meal, gizzard shad. Warrior Lures, custom designed and painted spoons, blades, and crankbaits for any species of fish. Check out the complete line of Warrior products, including the new Warrior XL Flutter Spoon, online or at your local tackle retailer. Proudly made in Michigan. Trackstack Fishing Systems, manufacturer of high quality mounting track, rod holders, electronics mounts, downriggers, and fishing accessories. Any angler, any species, any boat. Trackstack Fishing Systems, proudly made in Michigan. Rytec Marine, makers of custom-designed transducer mounts and gimbal brackets. Great sonar performance starts with a quality transducer mount, and Rytec has a mounting option for any brand on any boat. Rytec Marine, making life a little easier on the water. Worldwide Marine Insurance. Don't get caught with a loss to find out you have the wrong insurance for your boat and fishing gear. Contact Bob Llewellyn today for a free checkup of your current coverage. Worldwide Marine Insurance. Anglers insuring anglers. Fishhawk Electronics, providing lure speed and water temperature at any depth. Featuring hardwired models X4 and X4D and the new portable X2, anglers can have the Fishhawk advantage anywhere they fish. Trolling without a Fishhawk is simply called boating. Max Lure, the original since 1969. Catch more fish with the wedding ring spinner, smile blade, 
Double D Dodger, Flashlight Attractor, and more. Max Lures, a legacy of innovation for 50 years. Macklin Heating and Cooling, experts in the installation, maintenance, and service of home comfort systems. Family owned and operated in mid-Michigan for 50 years, Macklin Heating and Cooling, where your comfort matters to us. Procure Bait Sense, manufacture of high quality bait scents, cures, and dyes. Made with whole fresh bait, Procure scents perfectly mimic what fish eat every day. Procure, helping anglers worldwide catch more big fish. Hey anglers, welcome back to Teaching Fishing. I'm Captain Lance Valentine and we are breaking down step number two of our eight steps. Step number two is finding the right depth of water and the right depth of fish before we start putting lures in the water. So what we're going to do here is something a little different. We're going to actually do a little case study on shad, gizzard shad, and summer walleye bait options. So let's take a few minutes to talk about our first case study, and that is talking about shad location. So gizzard shad are a very, very popular bait fish, both up here in the north and down in the south. Reservoirs are loaded with them. Uh, natural lakes are loaded with them. And if fish can get gizzard shad, they absolutely love to eat them. It's a high-protein, soft raid bait fish that fish love to chase. But they have very, very specific characteristics. They have very specific behaviors and very specific times that they are a preferred bait fish for lots of different game fish. So let's talk about gizzard shad. Gizzard shad spawn usually in late spring. Water temperatures in the low 60s up to the, the high 70s. And it corresponds perfectly with late pre-spawn for walleye fishing early pre-spawn and sometimes even the spawn period for largemouth bass, late pre-spawn for uh, smallmouth bass. It's just a perfect bait fish at the perfect time for walleyes, bass, smallmouth bass, and pike to eat. They spawn at nighttime. They're a broadcast spawner, which means they just lay their eggs all over and kind of hope. They like to spawn, listen to this, they like to spawn on shallow sand bottoms with gravel spots and flooded timber. So if you have a reservoir near you, I guarantee you, you can figure out where the shad spawn. That's why those shallow bays that have a lot of cover, some rock, some, a lot of old wood cover when the, maybe your reservoir was cut down, that's why that is a great bay early in the summertime for walleyes and largemouth and smallmouth bass because they're in there chasing the gizzard shad. Uh, they're usually found near the surface of open water. We're going to talk about how that moves in just a second. Uh, they may go a little bit deeper, but remember, gizzard shad are extremely sensitive to low oxygen. So once we get that summertime situation with warm water, we get a thermocline, we got a problem. Those shad can't go down to the water they prefer, so they have to go up and stay in the top part of the water column. Remember that gizzard shad are plankton eaters. So what does that mean for us as anglers? Well, if you're like me, you were taught that when it got hot and flat and sunny outside that a lot of fish like to go into cover or go to the bottom. There's, there's less light down there. They don't have to worry about being too hot. Everything happens down at the bottom. Well, if you have gizzard shad in your body of water, that's a bad place to go fishing. Because remember, gizzard shad are plankton feeders. So as it gets hot, flat, calm in the summertime, all the plankton rises to the surface. They get in big giant mats, even the, you know, the good plankton we're talking about. They get in giant mats and the gizzard shad are directly below those mats, just below the surface, two, three, four feet down, eating that plankton. Well, what do you think happens to the bait fish? The bait fish come up there, here come all the game fish. So here comes the walleyes in their lake. Largemouth bass will spend a lot of time in the top five, six, seven, eight feet of the water column chasing gizzard shad that are on a plankton pod. That's important to understand. Just because we were taught we need to go deep in warm, sunny, clear water, we don't. If we have gizzard shad, we need to make sure that we go to the top and look for gizzard shad in the top part of the water column and game fish just underneath them eating them. Let's talk about a few real quick patterns here for gizzard shad. Again, remember, during spawning, uh, you want to fish in shallow water near gravel shorelines, flats that are sand with gravel, and flooded timber. Great way to get in there with some crankbaits, catch all kinds of game fish. Summer patterns, these fish are going to move to open water, but again, as the water warms up and we get a thermocline, these fish are going to be up in the top part of the water column. That's where the game fish are going to be. As it turns into fall, shad will remain in open water, but they'll start to move closer to main lake structures. So in uh, open water bodies of water like uh, reservoirs or natural lakes, you'll start to see a movement from 
real open water where there is no structure, closer towards shore where there is some structure with a huge movement towards drowned river mouths, harbors, and any influence of current. So we'll see a shift in where our game fish go in the fall time as the gizzard shad start to move. Remember, as we start to look for gizzard shad, two places you want to look on your sonar and where you want to fish. Directly below the gizzard shad, there'll be fish that are actively, aggressively feeding. You can fish fairly fast through those fish and get them to bite. And when they're not feeding, those fish won't go too far. They'll go down about 10, 12 feet below the gizzard shad, and they will stay with that school of shad swimming throughout the year so they're close to their meal. So there's a quick little case study on gizzard shad. Learn where it spawns, how it reacts over the course of the day, and what it eats. You're going to catch a lot more game fish by following this favored bait fish. Fishhawk Electronics, providing lure speed and water temperature at any depth. Featuring hardwired models X4 and X4D and the new portable X2, anglers can have the Fishhawk advantage anywhere they fish. Trolling without a Fishhawk is simply called boating. Max Lure, the original since 1969. Catch more fish with the Wedding Ring Spinner, Smile Blade, Double D Dodger, Flashlight Attractor, and more. Max Lures, a legacy of innovation for 50 years. Macklin Heating and Cooling, experts in the installation, maintenance, and service of home comfort systems. Family owned and operated in mid-Michigan for 50 years, Macklin Heating and Cooling, where your comfort matters to us. Procure Bait Sense, manufacture of high quality bait scents, cures, and dyes. Made with whole fresh bait, Procure Sense perfectly mimic what fish eat every day. Procure, helping anglers worldwide catch more big fish. Anglers, welcome back to Teaching Fishing. Again, I'm Captain Lance Valentine. We are breaking down step number two of our eight steps, depth of water and depth of fish. We just got done with a real quick case study of where gizzard shad go throughout the year. So if you have gizzard shad in your lake, you can follow them. Let's kind of switch gears here, and let's talk about bait fish options for summer walleye. So we, went to, uh, we started a case study of a bait fish. Now let's start a case study of a game fish and the options that it has. Now, remember, walleyes are going to have lots of options over the course of the, of, the, of the summertime. These are open water fish. They love to live in open water, but they also are designed to live perfectly inside cover. Weeds, wood, rock. So there's lots of bait fish options. If I have perch in my body of water, there will be a lot of walleyes very, very shallow, even in the middle of the summer. If I have shad or shiners in the system, I'm going to have an open water bite because those are both plankton feeders, and they're going to go to the surface as the water gets hot, flat, and calm. I'm going to have an open water bite out in the middle of nowhere in the top part of the water column. If I have smelt in the body water that I'm fishing, I may have walleyes down as deep as 50, 60, 70, 80 feet chasing big smelt that they love to eat, and they get big, fat walleyes if you have smelt. If I have alewives in my body of water, I may see a lot of walleyes in mid-depth flats, 15 to 20 feet deep, chasing alewives that are kind of staying in open water but will like to be on flat areas. So we have lots of different options for summertime walleye. So again, understanding what bait fish live in your lake, where they go at certain times of the year, you need to determine your best option for catching fish. So let's go, let's actually do a, a little deep digging into how uh, yellow perch actually act, one of the favorite baits of uh, our northern walleye here. So again, yellow perch spawn in the spring in the upper 50 degree range just after walleyes are done laying their eggs and they're coming off their post-spawn recovery. They lay their eggs in shallow water, usually in anywhere from 6 to 10, 11 feet, where there is submergent, just starting emergent uh, weed growth. That, that first new weed growth of spring, that's where perch like to lay their eggs. Ideal because walleyes are just coming off their spawning habitat. First thing they hit are these new weeds. There's lots of perch in there to eat. They like to spawn on weedy bays, weedy bars. They will use brush, uh, but again, shallow water is the deal. Um, habitat. Perch will remain shallow after they spawn. Then they move to mid-depth mid flights or breaks. But the young of the year perch, those one and a half, two, three inch perch that are just 
perfect size perch nuggets for walleye have a tendency to stay inside shallow cover all year. That's why once we get a thermocline and we get some heavy weed growth, you may see some of the largest numbers and, believe it or not, some of the biggest walleye in the system will actually move shallow right in the heat of summer because that's where all the bait is. Also remember, if you've ever walleye fished, you've been up here in the north, you've heard that walleyes bite better early morning and late afternoon. That's really not true. We catch fish all through the course of the day. But remember that perch have a really hard time seeing when you have light transition. So from dark to light in the morning and light to dark in the afternoon, perch really, really have a hard time seeing. They basically go dormant. But at that time of day, walleyes, with that reflective tapping and loosening in the back of their eye, they have great eyesight at that time of the year. So we have a situation where the game fish can see, bait fish can't. Uh-oh, bad time to be a perch. Okay, let's talk real quick again about some spring patterns. Uh, if we're going to look for walleyes, we want to look where the perch are. Springtime, shallow, hard bottom areas with weed or brush. That's going to hold all the way true for smaller, young of the year, one or two year old perch. That's going to hold true all year. That's their favorite place to be. They will also use hard spots on sandy bottom and mid depth flat. So if you have a situation where you don't have a lot of young of the year perch, you have more big perch, start looking for game fish. We're talking about walleye here, but all kinds of game fish on those mid depth flats, 15, 20, 22 feet deep, sand bottom with hard bottom spots. You'll see a lot of perch there. And again, in the fall, perch return to shallow hard bottom areas on sand flats, the remaining weed growth from the year, and the backs of bays. So we've got this movement of perch, which moves the walleye, which gives them opportunities. And remember, walleyes will also use gizzard shaft they're available, emerald shiner. So understanding each bait fish and how it moves is important, but understand how each game fish relates to each different bait fish over the course of the year. All those factors are going to put you in the right place using your sonar to find those fish. That's going to put you in the right place every day on the water to catch more fish. All right. That kind of wraps up our step number two. Remember, we've got lots going on. Please take some time to check out uh, our new uh, website, teachingfishing.com. We've got a brand new awesome kickoff coming up here pretty quick. You can always find us at Facebook, facebook.com slash teachingfishing, all one word. And if you've got a question or want to get a hold of us, you can check us out at teachingfishing at gmail.com. We're always here with our whole gang here at Teaching Fishing to help you get more uh, information. If you've got questions you'd like to ask the staff about today's seminar or anything, remember March 31st, we will have our live Q&A at 7.30 p.m. on our Facebook page, facebook.com, Teach and Fishing. Sign up. Be ready to go a little before 7.30. We have a two-hour live Q&A. We'll cover all your questions. So if you have any questions about bait fish, depth of water, depth of fish, make sure you check us out. More than happy to get you started. Coming April 1st, we'll be kicking off the Great Lakes Way. Lance, Captain Lance presents Teach and Fish in the Great Lakes Way. We're pretty excited about that, so stay tuned for that. All right, again, questions on March 31st. And if you want more information about how the eight steps actually works and understand more about bait fish, we've got DVDs downloadable or streaming available for you to watch that cover 11 different species of bait fish and go in detail through our eight steps. I'm Captain Lance Valentine. Everybody here at Teaching Fishing wants to thank you for joining us, and we'll see you back here next time at Teaching Fishing.